in from the original story and what's left out from the original story is very much a result of Dennis's script. Which, uh, Although, I mean, it's a bit, but it's a bit of both. It's isn't it? become because, a bit give and take. Yeah, yeah, yeah because it, it's um, there, there are just the, you can't get everything in because we haven't got enough time, and there's quite a lot in the book. And also, what, it, it became clear early on in the writing process that it was like ne- it was nece- it was going to be necessary to add some other things because there's two sorts of narratives, isn't there? There's the sort of the narrative of the there's the narrative of the story of Matilda and the narrative of the scenes and the lines and how, how those people talk to each other. But there's also a kind of a, there's this musical narrative that runs through, which plays into plays quite strongly into the sort of you know the kind of emotional sort of the emotional sort of structure of the of the piece. You know, which is really interesting to yeah. us because Dahl has this ability to make us care about the characters, but he he's very undemonstrative in the way, you know, people get locked in cupboards and murdered and stuff and it's just like, and the next day the sun came up and that's why he's so brilliant is because kids get to indulge in all these things that kids yeah. love, you know, you know, these, these, what you were saying, dirty world where adults are mean and throw kids by the hair, but Dahl doesn't say, you know, the kid who got thrown by the hair ended up in a wheelchair and, you know, like, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's quite... Cartoony. He writes in a cartoony kind of. He does in that, write in, this, in a cartoon, in, and that's, that's in these books, obviously. Yeah, and that's been well, that's been one of the sort of challenges as well, because the the I've had to sort of try and keep it cartoony, but keep it real. And the music is the same it's, sort of thing, like there's sort of cartoony parts to it, but at the same time, you you've got to also have really strong emotional parts. Yeah, you? and you and I've had to try and write what would what would Matilda sing, what would Miss Honey sing. Well, in the book, I don't really talk much about how they're feeling and when you're singing a musical you're meant to be expressing a bit of something so we've been working really hard yeah. to not damage how we feel and Matilda's still got to be that brave smart kid and Miss Honey's still got to be quiet and stuff but if she if Miss Honey came out and went I feel so terrible you know it's just be like ah. Oh. as a writer I tend not to have actors in mind when I'm writing anyway um, I, I tend also not to visualize characters too strongly I hear voices Quite right. clearly and stuff, but not kind of. I don't really see people, you know. But um, and, but the thing about this is that Quentin Blake's illustrations are so sort of. I mean, everyone remembers that illustration of the trunch ball, you know yeah, what I mean? Socks. Standing there with yeah. The, yeah, there's britches that kind of pull up, and also the, it, Miss Honey, you know, and Matilda. Uh, that you re- remember those illustrations, so in a way they sort of come into your head. Although you, you don't, you can't you really, don't have you don't that sort of imagine cartoon characters sort of moving it's not around. That animation, oh, no, that's yeah. right. It's exactly the same that's for me. Cute. You don't. You don't animate those drawings in order to... It's just the same. It's a, it's a sound it? and, that's, and that's a touchstone yeah. for your understanding of it. But yeah, I, was, I haven't imagined a single... And, until we did a workshop and, and I started to see a few humans doing it, I never... Yeah. In fact, we've know. said that we don't want humans, really. You know, if there's any way we can get kind of puppets or some... Robots. Robots would be great. I, I didn't really read, I'll be honest. I mean, I, I didn't really read until I was about... 13. I mean, I could, I could read, but I, I just, I don't think really, we, we didn't really have books and things, you know, it, it just wasn't, it wasn't really that kind of um, a house. I mean, it wasn't like we were ignorant or anything, we just didn't really, you know, it, it just wasn't that sort of, uh, we weren't really book people, we watched telly, you know, and it wasn't until, but I sort of discovered reading when I was about 13, I think, I sort of, and I think, I think strangely, I discovered, I read The Lord of the Rings, and I read it from cover to cover, and I sort of discovered reading, and I just thought reading was... From then on, I thought reading was brilliant. I, I read when I was young. My brother was one of these... My older brother was one of these kids who had read all the famous fires by the time he was five. You know, he was very... He, was a, he, he got reading early. And I wasn't, I wasn't... I don't think I was like that. I don't think I read as much as he did. He was kind of the nerdy one. But, um, but yeah, we, we always read, and... and uh, I think Roald Dahl's probably the Twits is one of my earliest reading memories. So it's pretty. Dahl's pretty embedded in me. Twits, Charlie and the Chocolate. Charlie and the Chocolate. The Great Glass Elevator is great. Yeah, as well, isn't it? Uh, I think it's all also um, for, um, yeah, the Poacher one, Danny the Champion of the World, was really early for me as well. And uh, George's Marvelous Medicine and the Magic Finger was really early for me too. And I ended up. I loved his biography. I loved. Flying oh, Soul, yeah. Boy and Flying Soul um, in my teens as well. But um, I think, uh, so yeah, Dahl was the biggest. I remember 
my mum getting, I had forgotten this, my, I wrote, I, I, I wrote um, a story for school in year four or five where someone goes to swear and I, you know, and, and I wrote something like, S dash dash dash, he said, although I couldn't write it here. And it was a really Dalian naughtiness, or at least it was a Dal inspired naughtiness. I, my, I remember my mum getting cross with me. I have to ask my mum if this is accurate, this memory, but I remember her saying, you know, just because he does that, he's a grown up, he's allowed to do that. You don't write that sort of stuff in the stories. The director you, you you bounces my songs off his kids, and I, my baby's tiny, but um, my three-year-old, three-and-a-half-year-old is three-and-a-half, and, a half, and uh, she is pretty, she, she's a bit young to really concentrate on music for a while, but she's weird with my Matilda songs. She doesn't really like music. She doesn't, she's not yet, she thinks it's loud and annoying, but when I play, especially when I grow up, she... She likes that. She, yeah, she loves it, and she likes um, quiet. She sits with the earphones on, kind of just... She's weird because she's not really, she doesn't seem very musical, but when she's listening to Matilda stuff, because I, maybe because I put a bit of ceremony out, you know, listen to this, this is one of Daddy's songs. And she has this thing where she, um, you'd think if you're listening, watching her listen, that she's heard the song 10 times as she's singing along. But what she's doing is just, just after it, just going quiet, silent. No, she's just, it's just after, just the after. she's just hearing it for the first time. Wow. It's really weird. She's really connected to it. It's really weird. Anyway. We, we, what we did, we have done though, is we've had, we had quite a few workshops as well. Like, you know, we've had uh, two or three workshops where we've worked for a couple of weeks, in fact, on the music and script with and actors, combining yeah. them with actors. And then we've invited kids in. And that's been very telling, you know. They, ha they hate it. Yeah, they, 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 yeah. They, they all cry. One and run star. Out. <laughs> We've invited kids to watch and. So I haven't try... been present at all. Oh, well, you, you weren't at the kids' no. one, yeah. Well, we've done one workshop with kids, and Tim wasn't there, unfortunately, he was in Australia. But we've, we did a workshop and we came in and we sort of like sat, sat a big bunch of kids down and sort of, you know, got, got, got them to look at it. And they seem to like it, funnily enough. It's interesting giving workshop performances to kids because. A workshop performance demands you engage with the text because it's just a whole lot of people reading off scripts. So it's it's hard, isn't it? Because what yeah, kids love like about musical theatre is yeah. I remember Starlight Express changing my life when I was ten. People on roller skate. The text, the narrative. Yeah. I, I I think I can probably safely say wasn't the thing that drew me. No, in. but that's right. There's a sort of visual spectacle that you're yeah, after, isn't there? Yeah. And that's difficult to sort of. Obviously, in a workshop, that's tricky. But what we do to counteract that is we make sure that we've got hungry kids in there. And we don't feed them unless they give us an answer we want. Unless they laugh. If they don't laugh. If you laugh, you have They a laugh, they get food. We laugh, throw little, little bits of salami like feeding them. ducks. Like feeding really funny ducks. <laughs> <laughs>